and welcome back to, well, another video. Today we are going to be playing Final Fantasy IV, and yes, we're taking a break from Stardew Valley. Ah, uh, yes, this is another one of those Senjin Nanjin games that came out during the later era. Nanjin Zero Nine to be exact. Oh boy, guess what, they're starting to reuse Chrono Trigger music. Whereas you can translate this in Google Translate from Chinese to English, like I said in the Weird Pirate series. Again, this is just, well, a break from Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, but don't worry, they'll be low soon. So yeah, this is basically a backport of Final Fantasy IV, from the SNES, the NES. And, they still had, and there's one thing about this. Like most other Sinjin Dungeon games during their well later era, there is apparently Japanese with Chinese. So the names are in Japanese, but then when we get to the menu, they're in Chinese for some odd reason. Oh yeah, I can just speed this up. You're going, in the original, you had to fight these three together, but here, you have to fight them separately. Which, as I mean, better than Sinjin Genicola's version, which yes, that's not a company. Where they skip that entirely. And say so you just have to go to the castle, which is, well, what we're going to do next, but very similar to Final Fantasy VII, it has exactly the same mono system. And after that, we stand here, and this moves. And this is the mansion from, or Dawn's mansion from Final Fantasy VII. This is the most common thing in this game, is just to reuse stuff from Final Fantasy VII. And also the background music from Conjure. So yeah, this is the part we meet with your king, but I think I forgot his name. And after this, you know what that means. Grinding time! Yes, just to get to the second boss. Third boss, yes, I think it's the third boss. You're going to have to grind, which is what about half this video is, but don't worry, I, I will have more weirdo stuff. So, yeah, you can go ahead and translate the chin from Chinese to English, as I said earlier, but anyway, then I forgot the other ones that he joins you after this. Which, since there are very little rooms in the original map, they had to converse down to just this room. And also, there's no soldiers walking off like in the original. No, you can go ahead and talk to anybody. Until you just leave the room. And then you meet up with this guy, which instead of going over to yet another area, and even meet up with another character, they just decide to go ahead and, well, put it here. Well, just put it, put it here, and then he just leaves. Hi, and then this guard just comes out of nowhere blocks. But yeah, the first thing you want to do is go in here and buy potions. Why? Because these really are the only other places where you can buy potions. This one, I believe, is sword. Or is it he healing for? Oh, yes! Oh, wait. But, but yeah, once you decide to go ahead and do that, you can leave the area. You get introduced to whatever that character is. After a little bit of talking. And then your, friends, your friend joins you. And then you... And you walk right on top of her just to get to another cutscene. That's actually very common in most later such challenging games, that they have a whole bunch of text, but very little gameplay. So yeah, for the next part, it's just mostly gonna be grinding. And if you notice, there is no way to get into the villages, so you're gonna have to go back. Oh boy, so we have to meet up with this guy, which is just Sifiroth from Final Fantasy VII being reused again. 
Oh, and also this map is just Final Fantasy VII Mineral K, or Mineral Mine, or Mineral Min, as the English translation called it. But yeah, this is the time when we speed up to do uh, grinding. Because just like in my other ones, when it has a painfulness of grinding, there are lots and lots of it. Oh, and also the background is trees again. So yeah, I want to get up for at least my sword to level 5. So yeah, as you can also see, all the enemies are being reused to Final Fantasy 3 again. Because, I mean, hey, who doesn't like reusing Final Fantasy 3 enemies? And some of the enemies, this horse-like water power, you can use the second one. Now, yes, just like in the original, you can use... Wait, I'm just gonna get myself up. Yes, you can use magic, and you can use the, um, spell cast, or whatever it's called. But yeah, they kept it in this version. And I leveled up. But these are from the Sinjin Genakota version. Yeah, Sinjin. Sinjin Hajik or whatever it's called in China. Okay, see, I use the phrase horse like thingies, or whatever they're called in the original, but. So, Sinjin, not Sinjin Jinakota, but I might pronounce as here, it's made a version of Final Fantasy IV that was separated into three cartridges, which are called Final Fantasies X1 through 3, even though they have no relation to Final Fantasy X1 through 3. Two, which is what X is in the new moves. But yeah, that version is much more accurate than this version. However, a fan, I don't know if to be his name, decided to give me this cartridge for this playthrough. It was uh, actually a while ago, so yeah. Thank you to that fan who apparently just gave me some of it just wrong. If you're still watching this. But yeah, by this point, all you really need to know is that after a little bit, and I'll show you. You see, the names are in Chinese, but then the names on the battle are Japanese, so that really makes no sense. And you can also see if your thing has been leveled up, as well. you can see here, mine has been leveled up, so it's now going to take at least one battle of sixes. And no, it takes a battle of three just to do it. Now, another way is to use those four enemies and keep missing every time, but you would also waste your HP by a lot. Okay, now it should be ready. Now, just a little bit more to go. Okay, there we go. And then, let's see. Get this done. Get this done. So, yeah, I'm gonna get my sword to level 5. The reason why we need to do that is that because the boss, whatever you get past Riddy, I think it's her name. Once you get past her... Yeah, so... You have to fight the... You have to fight your general for some odd reason. Though I'm not sure how the original story went. So yeah, let's go ahead and do more grinding. The reason why I want to get up to level 5 is that because, well, I just told you that, but anyway, so yeah, outside of that, the game is a very harsh version of, well, Final Fantasy 4, but the actual name is Zun Zong Hun in Xang 4, which is Final Fantasy 4, Gun Yi Yun A Shin Jin Fizang, I presume means the After Years, which was a sequel to Final Fantasy 4 that was on the PlayStation Portable. Now, this isn't the first time that Senji Nanjing ever misworded anything or did anything else like that. No, no. In fact, NJ-075 is a title screen hack of Final Fantasy VII, but it was renamed to Final Fantasy VII Price Score because they wanted to get a little bit of extra money over there. 
So yeah, and the one I, in the version I played of Final Fantasy Legend 3 was a tile screen that had somehow been recorded online. But yeah, there there is one video of at least one person playing this, but it's in such low quality and it's about 13 years old now, so this is a high quality thing. With, of course, my voice. So anyway, after a little bit of grinding, which there is actually a lot to do with grinding for some odd reason, you will eventually reach level 5 and fight the Mist Dragon, which, yes, they are going properly in, in boss orders because, I mean, hey, this is a new dungeon we're talking about. But yeah, as you're eventually gonna see, they eventually just flip the entrances, so in Final Fantasy VII, when this map was used, you would come out and see the dead snake, which is not any hole, but rather just lying on the ground, and then you would exit through here, and yeah, and then you would be led on to the other story. So yeah, after you go through the little village part, then you never come back to this area. Well, actually, yes you do, but you come back at such a later time after the little story element. So yeah, let's just make our way through here. Fight off these enemies. So yeah, after a little bit of fighting and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, your HP will go up. Get a little bit of whatever it's talking to you, I think it's supposed to So then after well defeating more enemies and leveling up, you get to this part, which is the original entrance of the mineral cave. Well, mineral or whatever it's called. And you fight the mist dragon because apparently just like the original, no sprite for it exists. So they actually use the Final Fantasy 4 battle theme, whereas the other one was just Final Fantasy 3. But yeah, just like the original, the Mist Dragon is not as hard. If you have enough help. So yeah, you can also have these things. Which are the summons that you can do. And yes, they're in the original, but in that version, on the same battlefield. Here, they go on a separate screen, which is unique to this version of Final Fantasy IV, but it doesn't really serve the purpose well. So yeah, after a little bit of, well, more grinding in the fetus, it takes a while. That was just my FPS on frame for a second. So then after a little bit of this fighting, once it's done, which also takes a while, especially if you're not at the right level. <sighs> no, I wouldn't have liked that. So yeah, you then get more conversation because that's mostly later some. And you all get the enemy fight, maybe. I mean, for most of the time I played this, and yeah, it's just like most other games I did during the weird part of the series, I played it before. Most of the time would count about 90% of the time, so it may happen to you. But anyway, the next part is, oh boy, more grinding. And also, I'm gonna show you off something strange at the end of this game. Exit and go over to Rydia's village. Then, after silent silence for some odd reason, they start playing again more Chrono Trigger music, and also the tiles are being from Burn and Nibium. I think I accidentally pronounced it correctly. And 
and it's the Metal Ages. But don't worry, the music just gets on weirder and weirder and weirder. So yeah, just like the original, you lose this boss fight. But how you do it is weird. You don't find Brit you don't fight Britia, you find the Titan Tid that she casts, and yeah, there is more conversational dialogue after this. Then you can spew it out for some odd reason, and it's just like the original, except it's weirder. And if you try to go back, it says you can't go in there. Now you can skip this part and well do grinding, but and that's what I'm about to do here. But yeah, that boss is just impossible. To get past, but hold on a second, I'm just get at this because we're gonna need that extra money because you don't earn money. Slow. Oh, and I failed again. Oh, wait, I accidentally went too far. Wait, I got another thing. Yep, I now have safe states, because I found it. Well, yeah, that was a little bit of an accident I thought I accidentally saved before, but... No, I did not, but thankfully there's automatic safe states. So yeah, let's skip this part. Okay, now let's save. And the menu is also like Final Fantasy 7, of course. And now... Oh boy, here's the title screen from you guys. So yeah, this is how ends work. You no longer rest in them. You no longer rest them outside of a cutscene. And if you try to rest again... It acts like a potion shop. Which is crazy from the beginning. Oh yeah, here comes the trouble with what the four soldiers or whatever they're called. So yeah, you come out and you have to go across these. Oh, great, we have to fight these again. And yes, they're taken from the Shinjinakota version and given lots of color. So yeah, if you want to survive, just keep putting a bunch of these on there. Until your health gets, say, somewhere around the 20s, which, do, which can do pretty, e pretty easily. If you're not looking, but... Say, so yeah, get your HP 100. Oh yeah, just keep on doing that for at least a couple more things until you get to your 20s, but... So yeah, this boss does take a while just to get done. And after you waste all your whatever thingies, I think they're called spells, but... Or summons. Yeah, that's what they're called summons, I think. So yeah, first you start attacking these, and you start attacking these, and yeah. It just takes a while, so you why I'm speeding this up. Because my goodness, does it just take a whole long amount of time just to get it done. And I mean, this is just how much these soldiers are protecting the main bosses. Very hard. So, yeah. So, after you finally manage to beat this, which is... It may be impossible, but maybe not. But it does take a long time. Then you finally get to go over to some other person's house, and... Oh boy, you have to fight the octopus-like creature. And then the back to this, then the final boss is just painful. Oh 
very, very big. And since I think we're getting close to the end... Oh my goodness, how long does it take just to kill a boss? Now it's still not dead. So yeah, after a while just wasting your summons, he will eventually be defeated. Oh boy, I'm already on the last one. This heals him. Appears. Oh, are you kidding me? It's time to start using this. And he's still not dead. So after a while, just using it, or whatever you still have. Finally, he's defeated. So yeah, Viridia talks to you, or young Viridia. She then joins you, and you can finally explore this village, which is at one village from Final Fantasy IV, but I think I forgot to say. Nice, I already maxed it out. So yeah, you can go ahead and generically max out everything. Most of these buildings still serve their original purpose. Oh, nothing. So yeah, let's just continue and go on and, well, doing these, and, well, and get more of this. We're going to definitely need lots and lots and lots and lots of these. Oh, and also, if you decide to go ahead and talk to these people, what? Their portraits are from the Dragon Ball play. So yeah, they just keep on reusing stuff. You don't look like a woman. And then you have to enter this house specifically just to do another cutscene. Oh, and don't worry. And then after that, you leave the entire area. Oh, and also they just you want to have, have this stationary person? It looks like this. So, uh, what's a random face portrait for? Oh, no, it's just for everything. But yeah, most of the houses are from Final Fantasy VII. So then, once you finally leave this area, which is painful, you get to go inside the area in Cosmo Canyon's cave. Tell I that's his name. And also the music is being reused from Romance of the Three Kingdoms or Zungar Lee. Not the cacao one, but the one with Lula in it. Told you the music was gonna get weirder. So basically the very thing you have to do is, after at least a couple boss fights, don't go anywhere else in the cave because it leads to nowhere. And now everything's a physical wall. So yeah, after you feed about these enemies, you have to go over here and they skip most of the cave. I would like to run. You can run this escape very easily. So you get to the octopus-like creature, which for some odd reason has one frame. 
And now, you can just start using whatever you want. Yeah, this boss also takes a while. And you need to constantly start using these things. But yeah. And then the turkey thing will appear. And if he's still not dead, oh good, you get to reuse this entire thing all over. Yep. And it is officially dead. So once after that, you can finally enter this area. And then you go to silence, and oh boy, guess what starts happening after this? And you're not gonna believe the music once you get inside the castle. I think that's what's called. So then these, these airships start doing a little bit of a circular over thing. And... It's the Chocobo theme! And also, unlike the original, all the soldiers are strangely still alive! And also, this area is being reused from Final Fantasy VII, as you kind of expect. And look at that, there's two. But yeah, so this is the Chocobo theme. And, um, yeah, apparently being dead means that you look like a mediocre face. So yeah, after a little bit of you turn the party, and everything just stops for no reason, and anything, and everything comes back, you apparently get cleared, and you just talk to him. And guess what? It, and guess what else? Apparently, inside, if you thought that wasn't weird, not only are all the soldiers not dead, but guess what? One of them it works like a potion shop. Finally leave the area. And you have to go over to this area. Which is being reused from an earlier Sinjin Nanjing game. A Digimon port. Oh boy. You can tell where this is going. Time to start grinding it even more so. Lots and lots of just that grinding. Yeah, your character will die, but don't worry, after they specifically level up, which people, which apparently they still level up even if they're dead. They can still do it. But anyway, just getting through this cave in particular is painful. Constantly there are enemies everywhere, and every single time you have to just stand there and do nothing. And wait for you to just start grinding. And there's three levels to this, and the last one, of course, being the boss. So yeah, after a very long time of just grinding and going through the first and second levels, you will finally reach the boss. But yeah, but if you want to know where the first stairway is, and let's just fight all these off. So, okay, a little bit to know about swords. They won't level up with you, you just have to level up. You have to level them up auto manually. What are they even thinking about? So yeah, we'll then go 
to the second floor, but you didn't have to fight more enemies, because this is what Sinjo Kanji expects you to do. And yeah, and after a little bit of that, you finally get leveled up. Or not. So yeah, you just make this way, you make your way through the cave. And after a little bit of fighting with about as almost as many enemies as you can cram into one area, and sometimes just like throw a trigger, the music will occasionally be glitched and repeat exactly the same track over and over and over. Now, some of these enemies don't really require sword thingies, they just are very weak. And your sword is somehow weak. Also, I forgot to say, whenever you die, you get turned into stone. Yes, that's right. You die, you get turned into stone. Which is already very weird from the beginning, but don't worry, because... The next music just gets on here. So yeah, once you are finally on the third level... Finally defeat the boss, and the most painful thing comes in after you defeat the boss. You have to go through exactly the same levels as in the cave levels, over the exact same way as you came up. Meaning that you really want to grind more. Oh wait, almost got there. So yeah, you kill more enemies, and then eventually you get up to the Scorpion boss. Yeah, they don't have mom bomb in this one. Or they... So yeah, you enter the little egg thingy, which looks like crystal bulbs for some odd reason. And you fight this, which is Final Fantasy IV. But oh boy, guess what? It's still a pain. So yeah, basically this boss also takes just a long time just to get done. This is probably the reason why the caves are just three stories tall, because I bet some of them are just like, nope, you need to grind even more. And then you are finally done. And now you just have to leave and go through it over and over again, but there's at least a couple ways to miss this. First, you can just run, which works about half the time.
So yeah, when you're dead, you have these black and white photos. So yeah, you finally make your way through the cave. But to get your characters just alive, you have to fight until you get to their XP points. Which still takes a long time. But if you use that thing on your multiple enemies, and it will automatically kill them all. Oh, so Pretty is back alive, yet not your main character. So yeah, after a little bit of just trying to get through this. Which it also takes just a long time. And after you, I presume that two of your characters are now dead for no reason. Or just turned to stone. <sighs> it's just more grinding and grinding and grinding. And maybe occasionally enemies will throw MP at you, but that's about 50% of the time. Oh yes! You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. And you're dead. And there you go. And finally, the main character is back alive. <laughs> oh, no, it's good. So yeah, just come back here and buy potions. You have to, well, not go over there yet. No, you still can't go over there. You have to go back to the village. And when you go back to the village is through this cave again. That was actually quite easy. Just. Go through this again. And you'll just have two encounters if you're not wanting to really explore the other cave. So yeah, you just fight more enemies and so you just so happen to come out of the cave, which for some odd reason here. So yeah, you leave this area. Finally go back in here. And she is finally awake from some weirdo sleep.
Yes, sir, she's lost a talking after that. And also, while you're here, you may as well want to go ahead and put your sword. So once after that, you can finally go through the areas. This time you got a fourth character, so that makes it slightly easier. I mean, you still got a chance of losing, but... But I mean, hey, this is Sinjin Nagi. We didn't make the best ports, and they sometimes made the worst ones, but... Sometimes they make games that no other company really decided to. Kind of like Humber Team and how they did Super Mario World. So yeah, finally after that you can get to this area and they decide to clear it out. So this is the most interesting thing about this. Is how this is a, a 2D section if you would count. This is 2D. It's just giving a flat background and boom. It's gone. Now, you just have to make your way across, which are, this area repeats two times. Not exactly in the game, but within itself. Because, don't worry, there's still more enemies to go. And you got a boss at the end of this, just to get to the game. Which is the fifth character in the original crew. And also, the music's from Chrono Trigger again, but it's actually from Ace Attorney. It's known as Cornered. That was from the GPA. So yeah, after a while of just making it across and fighting off enemies. You get to Yang. Who is just staring at a wall a rock for no reason. Just from Final Fantasy 3. Buddy else. But yeah, also after a while, just nothing more than painful grinding. Finally defeat him, and after a little more conversation... He finally joins you! And he apparently has the most HP out of all the party members! Even though the original he had the least HP, so that's a new shift. But yeah, then you may get another enemy counter, you may have the game of randomism. Spew down to his own home kingdom, which is just reusing Sector 7 from, from Final Fantasy 7. Or Sector 6. Which is otherwise near Dawn's mansion in the original, but. Here it's a town that has no honeybee in, or it's an inn, but it's a potion shop. And the music's also from Chrome Trigger.
so after what I can only imagine that the king is being stolen from. Well, again, the romance of the Three Kingdoms series. Whereas everybody else is either taken from World of Warcraft, yes. So yeah. Once you try to leave the area, you get stuck into another one of these weird things, where you're meant to defeat another boss. Which is also from Final Fantasy III. But yeah, if you have a party member is a 5, and it's actually quite easy, but don't let your first party member die because he's going to do more single battle fights. See, so yeah, after that, the airships start doing this weird thing again. See, so yeah, after this thing again. Apparently, the main leader comes in. You have to fight this thing! Or whatever was called the original. Again. Because, hey, Senja Nanjin wants you to fight bosses twice! Then your friend C I now I remember his name Seal comes in or Cell or whatever he's called. And you do. And again you're supposed to lose this battle. Because main boss comes in, which is from World- which the frame pictures from World of Warcraft. He takes this thing, despite the entire fact that there's just an opening, and then he steals one of your party members. So then after more talking, Leave the area, and I think you have to go back to town or go in the inn. Okay, so you have to go back to the first town, which just takes a while because you, go, you have to go through this pass again and defeat more, and defeat more enemies. to go back to that previous town. Which you have to go through all these cave systems again. I mean, you can fight them if you want, if safe for grinding. But yeah, don't worry, there's more reusing stuff from Final Fantasy VII. You just have to go back to your very first town. Maybe. And 
statue, you maybe talk about that specific person? You didn't have to go back. To the other town. takes a while because you gotta go through all these random encounters. Finally now, go back and begin. Or not. I mean, I don't know what he said in Chinese. I don't know what he said in Chinese. I don't know what he said in Chinese, but... Okay, so are we supposed to... Okay, so are we supposed to go back to the first town? Because that guy, which, again, brings us to right. Apparently told us something. So yeah, that's what the original version didn't have, was this guy telling you what to do. You had to just figure it out on your own. So maybe we are now supposed to go back to the first town. to ask a random NPC just to move on. Or is it this one? No. Maybe it's this one? No. Because, I mean, there are only two people in this town. Also, areas we used from the gold saucer. Are you supposed to do this? And you go. And you can't go in between. Anyway, guys. 
guys, I don't actually know what to do. I will see you all on the next video. Bye!